As we all know, our planetary system has eight official members. Starting from the Sun, these are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Just a glance into the recent past, however, shows that this group of celestial bodies is far from being an unchangeable constellation. Our earthly definition of the planetary system always depends on our current scientific knowledge. Consequently, Pluto, which we think of as a dwarf planet today, was a firm representative of our historical planetary system as recently as the year 2006. Only when experts fundamentally renewed the definition of planets was this object in the Kuiper Belt reallocated to a different class of celestial bodies. Only a very few know that Pluto is not the only celestial body within the history of mankind to have met such a fate. Many researchers in the 19th century were convinced that the planet Vulcanus was an integral part of our galactic neighborhood. Today, you'll learn all about this fascinating celestial body in more detail and which circumstances finally led to the planet disappearing from the star maps. Want to join us on our journey to the greatest mysteries and the most groundbreaking discoveries in space? Then don't forget to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to never miss one of our videos in the future. If you're kept engaged with the content of our posts, then go ahead and show us with a thumbs up. A Galactic Hypothesis Mankind has been looking up at the stars for many millennia, while the everyday observer falls into reverent astonishment in view of the innumerable, radiating formations in the night sky. The scientific view to the firmament takes on a somewhat alternative perspective. It is essential within astronomical research to recognize recurring patterns in the sky. In the 19th century, terrestrial experts examined the night sky to grasp the characteristics of our galactic neighbors and to understand their backgrounds. Over the course of these investigations, however, scientists ultimately came across a striking detail. Close observation of Mercury provided the insight that the orbit of the smallest representative of our planetary system deviates strikingly from the shape of a Kepler ellipse. With the help of Kepler's laws, the fundamental regularities of the planet orbits around the Sun. With the help of Kepler's laws, the fundamental regularities of the planet's orbit around the Sun can be determined. But how was it possible that the rotation path of Mercury deviated from this fixed scheme? With the help of Newton's law of gravitation, researchers succeeded in identifying the cosmic culprit for the observed anomalies. Scientists came to the conclusion that the unusual orbit of Mercury was due to the disturbing influences of another planet. More precisely, it was the French mathematician and astronomer Urban Le Verrier who first introduced this groundbreaking theory to the public in 1860. This scientist was almost a household name at that time, and his thesis was met with great approval among the rest of the scientific community. In 1846, Le Verrier had succeeded in calculating the orbit of the then undiscovered Neptune by observing the orbit of Uranus. And indeed, the position of Neptune predicted by Le Verrier deviated only one degree from its true position. While experts agreed, therefore, that another planet existed in Mercury's proximity, there was still a fundamental riddle to solve. Where exactly was this celestial body located? Cosmic Search for Traces even before the search for this secret representative of our planetary system began, researchers were confronted with some complications. Basically, the search for objects within Mercury's orbit turns out to be extremely difficult. Since the smallest member of our planetary system is also the closest to the Sun, terrestrial telescopes had to be aimed at a point very close to the Sun. Since these regions of the sky never appear black to the observer, it is very complicated to identify those objects that barely stand out optically from their galactic background. At the same time, the search for the unknown celestial body christened Vulcan or Vulcanus involves some serious risks for terrestrial researchers. Even a small error in the telescope's alignment was enough to cause severe, irreversible damage to the observer's eyes. The extreme brightness that naturally accompanied the cosmic search came again with a special difficulty. Natural circumstances could cause light reflections in the optics, which led the terrestrial observer to see objects that did not exist at all. To find the exact location of the hidden planet, astronomers surveyed the sky over a period of more than 
than five decades, the reports of galactic bullseyes always turned out to be misinterpretations or confusions. The motivation to locate the unknown planet died with Leverrier, who was convinced until his death that he had found Vulcanus. Since the search for the ominous planet remained unsuccessful for many years, many scientists began to suspect that the orbital anomalies of Mercury might be due to other natural effects. Thus, for example, the assumption crystallized that between the small planet and the sun, there was not one single large compact celestial body, but a multiplicity of smaller rock bodies, which could also explain the orbital anomalies. These objects, called volcanoids, were thought to form an irregular ring around the sun, comparable to the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Another explanation was based on the effects that the assumed flattening of the sun would cause. Specifically, this concerns the deformation of a celestial body caused by its own rotation. However, these theses have never been proved sufficiently. In fact, it was only the publication of a revolutionary work that brought light into the galactic darkness, Albert Einstein's General Theory of Relativity. The End of the Search This work, published in 1916, was to provide the scientific community with some groundbreaking insights. The Special Theory of Relativity, published in 1905, deals with the behavior of time and space from the point of view of observers moving relative to each other and the associated effects. Based on this, the general theory of relativity explains gravity with a curvature of time and space, which is caused, among other things, by the involved masses themselves. Applied to the observed anomalies in Mercury's orbit, the detected anomalies could be explained almost completely by the influence of the Sun on the surrounding structure of space. While experts were satisfied with this explanation for many decades, the Vulcanus hypothesis was to experience a short-lived renaissance at the beginning of the 1970s. At that time, some experts were convinced that they had discovered faint objects near the Sun during a total solar eclipse. As a result, U.S. astronomer Henry Corton believed he had stumbled upon incontrovertible evidence for the existence of unknown planets near Mercury. In turn, the deepening of this supposed discovery provided the knowledge that Vulcanus might orbit the Sun at a distance of about 9 million miles. Consequently, the hypothetical celestial body would take just 11 days to completely orbit the celestial host star of our home planetary system. Corton, in turn, put the diameter of Vulcanus at a value between 200 and 500 miles. Later observations, however, suggest that the researcher was subject to a galactic fallacy within his investigations. In the following years, faint comets close to the Sun were discovered again and again, sometimes even falling into our glittering central star. Consequently, many of Corton's colleagues consider it likely that the American did not in fact see any unknown planets, but simply some of these small rocky missiles. Mysterious Observations Although the existence of Vulcanus is largely ruled out according to our current knowledge, mysterious observations have been reported again and again in the past which could prove the existence of the hidden celestial body. If we keep in mind that the hypothetical object would be a planet very close to the Sun, numerous volcanic transits would have to be observed. And indeed, in the past decades, some voices have been adamant they've seen the passing of Vulcanus in front of the solar disk. It was especially in the 18th and 19th centuries that such cases were reported. To this day, we cannot say with absolute certainty what the observers really saw at that time. Some of these stories are simply attributed to errors in optics and the resulting misinterpretations. However, there was a striking case from the 18th century when a supposed Vulcanist transit was recorded by two independent viewers at different locations. In theory, it could have been an asteroid. If this should be correct, the observers at that time would have been witnesses to a galactic milestone. As of yet, no asteroid transit before the Sun has been officially registered. The thesis that the observers mistook the transit of an unknown object in front of the Sun for sunspots was quickly rejected. For one thing, such dark spots on the visible surface of the Sun, which are cooler than their surroundings, take more than 10 days to travel from one side of the Sun to the other. Moreover, the existence of sunspots was already known to people in the 18th century. Will we ever solve this galactic mystery? It's literally written in the stars. We want your opinion. What do you think about this mysterious planet? 
Do you believe that Falconus really exists, despite all scientific hypotheses? We're already looking forward to your comments. And if you'd like to learn more about the most exciting discoveries and spectacles in the universe, click on one of the thumbnails in the credits to go to other videos on our channel. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.